All right, man, let's get right to it. You know, all praise is due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And we thank you for your Ruach Akwadash, who teaches us all things and brings all things back to our remembrance, which we were taught, which you were told us back in the day of eternity. Now, you heard me say in the day of eternity, and we'll talk about that, um, if not on this, in this teaching, later on in another teaching. But what's on my mind right now is how fake and phony and how hypocritical this damn nation is. Now, they want to do a test. They're going to shut everything back down. When you come back, they're going to say, okay, you got to take this vaccination. You got to be tested. But I'm going to tell y'all something. This, I forget the name of it, start with a PH, but it's, it deals with testing you through your nostrils. Okay? Now, right inside your head, in the center of your brain, which is going to be found if you go straight up somebody's nose back to the center of their brain. And you see them doing these tests. These people are leaning back and they stick a six to seven inch uh, Q-tips up these people's nose. Now, I don't know for a fact, but my spirit tells me, not my spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKwadash is telling me that they're trying to do damage or deactivate or totally rupture your pineal gland or your pituitary gland. Now, you might say, well, what they got to do with anything? Well, you go do the research. I'm going to let you go do that. You go look up the use of the pineal gland. You go look up the use of uh, your pituitary gland and what those functions of those different, um, uh, I guess you might call them, um, different functions of those different, um, what would you call those? It escapes my mind right off the top of my head. But anyway, those two different um, parts of your body, okay? Go do your research on that. When you do your research on that, then you come back and make comment on the board as to what you think they might be trying to do. Self-manifestation, conscious of self, it's the seed of the soul, you know. Why would you be fucking with that? Here's what I'm saying. I'm going to get off here. I ain't go, this, is, this is a quick hit. I'm, you know, coming out the box. I got plenty to share, <clears throat> but this is a quick hit. Why would you have to go up my nose to test me for COVID-19 when you asking me to wear a mask? Listen. Now, I'm wearing a mask because they say, okay, if I sneeze on somebody, it might travel seven feet, six feet, or whatever. They saying, well, if you spit on somebody while you're talking to them, you might, they might catch it. So sneezing, spitting, coughing. Okay. So if I can be If I could cause somebody to contract the COVID-19 by spitting on them, coughing on them, sneezing on them, then why the hell can't you just go up my nose? I'm sorry, why the hell can't you just go in my mouth and swab my mouth, the saliva in my mouth for the enzyme or whatever it is that you say is showing the forth that I got or somebody has the COVID-19? Why would you have to go up my nose into the center of my brain? Now, I done seen a couple different tests. I done seen them go in the person's nose on one side of their nose and on the other side of their nose. Then I done seen it where uh, they just went up the person's one side of the person's nose. But why you got to go up my nose? It's something else to that. Don't sleep on that. There's something else to that. I'm not taking no tests. I don't need no COVID-19 tests. I don't need your vaccination, vaccination, and I don't want your RFID chip. I've been knowing that the RFID chip was the mark of the beast. Father told me that back when I was, 
first coming up, young, 25, some, I'm 48 years old and I'm about to be 49 years old now. So I've been knowing about that, been telling people about that. And for all you brothers on there that don't see no so-called works on YouTube, get out of here with that, man. That's garbage. How many people have you done done work with that ain't on YouTube? Just yourself. Right. So the father records everything. The father got that. I'm his servant. Don't worry about what I'm doing. I'm his servant. I ain't going to worry about what you're doing. I'm going to preach the gospel he told me to preach. The gospel. The truth. <laughs> the fullness of the gospel. And that's it. I don't care what you think. <laughs> I don't care if you like me. I don't care about no death. Death, where is your sting? Seriously. My teacher taught me that when you pass from this life to the next, it's like walking from one room into the next. It'd be like me walking into, walking into my front room right there by the front door and then going back on the other side right there. <laughs> you really can't touch me. You really can't see me. You know what I'm saying? This avatar I'm in right now, you're like, oh, who is that nigga? Who is he? Right. My name is Yariel. Yisrael. That's my name. That's my Hebrew name. Yariel Yisrael. My government name is Alonzo Motley. That's what they gave me when I was first born. You know, they just put an address on you so that everybody know who to call you. But the question is, who were you before they put a name on you? You was alive. <laughs> oh, we go. I'm going to tickle your understanding. We're going to get real deep. We're going to get real deep on this channel. You know, ain't nobody going to be able to stay on this channel. <clears throat> I'm going to run you away. In fact, I want to run you away. I'm going to run you away if you ain't got no faith. You ain't going to be able to be on this channel without faith. All right. But for now, um, I just want you to think about that. That's my point. Think about. Why I got to have something stuck up my nose for a test to see if I got COVID? But you're telling me to put a mask on my face because I might sneeze on somebody. I might breathe on somebody. I might spit on somebody. You know, I might do something. So I need a mask on my face for that. But when you go to test me, now just stick something straight up his nose all the way back into the back of his nose on both sides. And, you know, then we'll be able to tell if he got it or not. Man, come on, man. Come on, man. Well, that's it for now. All praises due to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All the brothers is out there doing this work, man. Stand strong. You know, we almost out of here, man. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. When you start hearing this, when I'm, when I'm getting ready to start sharing with you, see, up until this point, people been like, well, you know, God, I don't know. He he might exist. He might not exist. You know, so what the prophets are saying, you know, um, you know, they kind of got their own inversion, their own interpretation. But the father made this to where you can't misinterpret this. And you're going to find that out. <laughs> you're going to find that out. And when you find that out, then you're going to realize like, damn, now it's decision time. See, the hour of temptation is just about upon us. OK, the Michael Jordans of the world. You got a billion dollars sitting over here in the account. They gonna tell you like, look, man. Uh, you want that billion? Take the mark of the beast. You can have it all day long. All these superstars, so called, so called. Because when you really walk it in the truth, you don't see no superstars. There's one superstar. There's one superstar. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. That's the superstar. Because he came and fulfilled the law. Because could nobody else fulfill it? And Paul told you, and we're going to get into it. Paul said, the law of the spirit of life, which is in, where is it? Where, where is the law of the spirit of life? The law of the spirit of life, which is in Yahweh Mashiach. Has what? Has made me free from what? Wait. The law of what? Sin and what? Death. 
He can't make it no plainer now. Now, should we just forget about the law? No. You, the whole Bible is about balance. The father told you. What did he say? He said that an uneven balance is an abomination unto me. So you know he going to have balance. So the father has balance. Understand that in everything he do. Okay. Now understanding that, understand that, yeah, you're supposed to continue to try to keep after the law and do the things that the father said. We still wear fringes. We wear our fringes, see? We wear our fringes. We wear our fringes. We're going to cut the pork out. We're going to love our brothers and our nation. I know what it said. My son called me today talking about um, Deuteronomy 23 where it talked about, hey, a boy is not an Edomite. Well, the father telling you, deal with him. You got to work with him. You're going to see him at work. You're going to go in. You're going to talk to him. Hey, how you doing today, Bob? <laughs> All right. Good to see you, man. In your mind, you think, yeah, your day coming, cuz. And look, the father, the one that hates you, it wouldn't make no difference if I hated you. What I'm going to do? Kill your flesh? You ain't supposed to be fearing the ones that can kill your flesh. You're supposed to fear the ones, the scriptures say, fear him that after he has killed you can cast your soul into hell, which is total separation from him. We know that Hades or the ground is hell, but we also know separation from the father is hell. So do all the things that you can, but if you cannot and you will not, 613 laws, you will not keep them all, then what? Then you got to have faith in Yahweh Shah and Mashiach that he did the work. He came and fulfilled everything, and he did. And who are his witnesses? The law and the prophets. <laughs> that's why when he saw up on Mount Transfiguration, hey, that's why when he saw up on Mount Transfiguration, who showed up on Mount Transfiguration? Moses, representing the law, and Elijah, representing the prophets, baby. And everything that Yahweh Shai did, everything that he did, fulfilled the law and the prophets. And I'm going to prove it to you. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai for his wisdom and understanding and his coming down in the flesh, because the body said, a body has not prepared for me. <laughs> see, see, y'all got it twisted where you thinking it's three. No, oh, it ain't three. It's one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is what? One. And it's simple. It's simple. Everything is three but one. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I'm running out of time on my phone on here. I don't know how much time I got. I'm just now getting on with this. I'm approaching the 15-minute mark. But number one thing I wanted to point out to y'all is think about that test that they're trying to offer people, man, give people. That's crazy. You got to go all the way up my nose. I got to lean my head back. And you got to go all up my nose, all the way to the center of my head. What are you damaging, man? What are you doing? What are you rupturing? What are you uh, uh, deactivating? That's what I want to know. It don't make sense. Just go right in my mouth, swab, saliva, run it off to the test, test it. You don't have it, you do have it, whatever. It's, it's, it's more to it than what they're trying to show you. And then we're going to get into how this law and the prophets is the witnesses, the two witnesses, the showing I oh, will just get um, um, John 5 and 9. What John 5 and 9 say? Hold on a second. 
Let's get job five and nine. And then we're going we gonna to shut it down. And we'll deal with you. John 5 and 9. Now, I've been sitting back listening to a lot of brothers, and I don't learn from a lot of brothers. I don't learn some things. Some things have been confirmed and shored up. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we're going to have to humble ourselves, man, and, and a whole lot of folks going to have to repent. Because some folks thinking that they're going to some kind of way get in to the kingdom on their works alone. Now, if you got faith, you're going to have works. I don't know. You got faith they're going to pay your ass on your job. So you get your ass up and you go to work every day. That's just common sense. If you believe in something, you're going to do something. If you got faith in something, it's going to manifest. That's all he's saying. Over in Revelation where it talk about these are they that heck, uh, these are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith in Yahweh Shai Mashiach. That's just letting you know they're going to be making the effort. They're going to be rehearsing the righteous acts. Right? The scripture says they're going to be rehearsing the righteous acts. We're be rehearsing the righteous acts, but guess what? They ain't going to be perfect. We're here to, make, we're here to help y'all become perfect, and you're going to be perfect. And by the time your house shot come, you're going to be perfect. We, that's what we're here for. But Pete, so let's get John 5 and 9. John 5 and 9. Hold on, let me look on my phone. I think it's, ye search the scriptures. I know what it is, but I thought it was John 5 and 9. John, oh, this is first one. John 5 and 9. It ain't that one. Bear with me. I'll just quote it while we go in there. Ye search the scriptures, and in them ye think Ye had eternal life, but they are they which what? Testify of me. So what scriptures is he talking about? Well, Yahweh shot, that's why you got to know the dispensations and ages. And I ain't seen nobody bring out no ages, dispensations and ages chart yet. The father said, rightly dividing the word of truth or rightly dividing and understanding the dispensations and ages. You got to understand the dispensations and ages. And if you don't, you're going to be lost, man. You ain't going to understand where you are, what happened, what's next. None of that. But I'm telling you right now that when Yahweh Shai came in, he came in during the age where the law was in effect. Abraham was, this is after, this, we call it the antediluvian age. After the flood. I'm sorry, the post-diluvian age. After the flood. The antediluvian age was before the flood. The post-diluvian age was after the flood. That time of the post-diluvian age is where Abraham comes in. God makes a promise to Abraham. That's where the angels show up and God shows up and speaks to Abraham directly and tells him about going in and destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. That's where, you know, children of Israel end up down in Egypt. Huh? That's where Joseph becomes a, a mighty man in Egypt. Huh? That's where uh, Yahweh shows up and speaks to Moses.